the flow table test in accordance with EN 12350 part 5. This training video has been produced by the Institute of Concrete Technology in partnership with Brett Concrete, Delman ReadyMix, GCP Applied Technologies, Hansen, LKAB, the MPA and BRMCA, QSRMC, Sika, Talent Concrete Training, Tarmac and Testing and Consultancy Services. The flow table test is used to measure the consistency of concrete and is suitable for concrete having flow values of between 340 mm and 620 mm. The flow of a concrete is usually specified by a flow class as shown in this table. Always wear the appropriate personal protective equipment when carrying out any testing with concrete. This includes safety glasses, protective clothing, gloves and safety boots. Ensure that you have all the necessary equipment available and that it is clean and serviceable. The concrete sample must be obtained in accordance with EN 12350 part 1 and before testing the sample must be thoroughly remixed. Verify the equipment works properly by checking that the hinged top can be lifted and is free to fall. The contact blocks are clean and that the drop height is within the correct limit of travel. Place the flow table on a flat and horizontal surface, free from external vibration or shock and ensure that when the top of the table falls to the lower stop, there is minimal tendency for the top to bounce. Clean the tabletop and mould and dampen just prior to use. Place the mould centrally on the tabletop and hold in position by standing on the two foot pieces. Fill the first layer of the mould with concrete, filling it approximately half the height of the mould, about 100 millimetres. Tamp the first layer lightly, 10 times, using the 40 millimetre square compacting bar. Fill the second layer of the mould with concrete and tamp this layer lightly 10 times using the compacting bar. If necessary, add more concrete to the second layer to maintain an excess above the top of the mould at all times. Using the compacting bar or a trowel, strike off the concrete level with the upper edge of the mould. Clean the tabletop of any excess of concrete and allow the sample to rest for between 10 to 30 seconds after striking off. Using the handles, raise the mould vertically over a period of 1 to 3 seconds. Within 10 seconds of lifting the mould, standing on the toe boards at the front of the table, slowly raise the tabletop until it reaches the upper stop, taking care that the top does not impact hard against the upper stop. Allow the table to fall freely to the lower stop. Repeat this cycle for a total of 15 drops, each cycle taking between one and three seconds. After completing the 15 drops, check to see if the spread has stabilized. If the concrete is still moving, Wait until it is stabilized before measuring the spread and record the time between the end of the drop cycles and the measurement of the spread. Using the rule, measure the maximum dimension of the concrete spread in two directions, parallel to the table edges, and record each of the two measurements to the nearest 10 millimeters. 
Calculate the flow value by adding the two measurements together and dividing by two. Report the final flow value to the nearest 10 millimeters. Check the concrete spread for signs of segregation. This is when the cement paste may segregate from the coarse aggregate to give a ring of paste extending several millimeters beyond the coarse aggregate. Report if segregation has occurred. The following information must be reported on completion of the test. Reference to the standard EN 12350 Part 5 Identification of the test sample The location of performance of the test The date of the test In the case of flow retention testing, the age of the sample from the first contact between water and cement Any indication of the segregation of the concrete for viscous concrete, the time between the end of the drop cycles and measurement of the spread in seconds. The flow value, F, to the nearest 10 millimeters. Any deviation from the standard test method. And a declaration by the person technically responsible for the test that it was carried out in accordance with the standard, except as noted above. The following information may also be reported on completion of the test if requested. The temperature of the concrete sample at the time of test, the time of the test, and the specified flow class or specified flow target value. For further information on the ICT's Concrete Field Testing Technician Certification Scheme, please visit our website